once again, welcome. Welcome to WOW uh, in Zoom. All right, welcome in uh, to WOW in Zoom. In case you wonder, hey, why? Oh, wrong, wrong, wrong Zoom, you know, uh, wrong Zoom, you know, so uh, at least you know that we're here uh, for a purpose, and that is to learn the Word of God. Just want to get this um, right at the beginning of the session. All right, the purpose of this um, wow is for us to know God and to love God. I always share that uh, we cannot help, you know, to love God if we get to know Him. Yeah, we cannot help to love God, but when we get to know Him. So, um, what's the purpose again? As we know God, as we love God, you know, it is about pleasing Him. And uh, to know God's Word, to love God's Word. And then finally get to know each other and love each other, right? Um, we we'll really wish that I can meet you face to face, but um, this is the best that we can do because, um, you know, of the circuit breaker, you know, but please keep yourself safe and um, the Lord bless you even if you are at home. All right, so this is the purpose, to love God, to love His Word, and also to love God's people. We're looking at the book of Joshua today. And um, today we're going to look at uh, Joshua chapter 9. The next uh, Wednesday will be Joshua chapter 10. Um, like as mentioned earlier, because of um, the second breaker, you know, we're going to have a wow every week. And I also thought that maybe we should just continue and then finish up the, the book of Joshua. So um, in a sense, I planned all the way up to July. This will be the schedule. Uh, you don't need to take a photo. Or this will all be on the uh, wow website, you know, where you can actually download uh, the PowerPoint slides and this will be inside. All right. So. Uh, we will go all the way up to 22nd of July, every Wednesday. Um, likely will be in Zoom until the, um, you know, the circuit breaker you know, uh, uh, comes to an end, then we will decide what's next. Just take note that 8th of uh, July, there will be no wow, partly because of uh, um, all leaders meeting. All right, so this just to give you a heads up. Okay, if you are wondering, uh, where, where do I get this uh, you know, website, uh, you know, where do we get this you know, uh, slides and notes? It's actually at bbtc.com.sg. At this point of time, I just want to make sure that you have a copy of uh, the notes. All right, copy of the notes is in the website. So you may want to download it, print it out, or just you know at least refer to it because we are going to look at this um, as we go through today's uh, lesson. And um, Kim, will you be able to just uh, put in the chat group as well so that they can have a copy? Okay, Ken, I will. Thank you, Kim. Okay, if it's okay. All right, so this is where you can get the uh, notes. Uh, Joshua chapter 9. I just want you to have this in mind again, that uh, the purpose, you know, um, yes, is to know God, to know God's word and to know and to love God's people and to love God and love uh, his word. But how do we go about doing so? I believe that there are three questions that we may want to ask ourselves every time we come before the Lord. And uh, the three que questions basically, uh, um, what does God require of me? What does God wants me to do? Whether is it to keep, to improve, to start or to stop? Keep doing something that you need to keep doing. Today we're going to talk about three areas that God wants us to keep doing. And also um, areas that we should improve and areas that we should uh, start consider doing or stop doing, stop doing. So uh, I use the acronym KISS. K-I-S-S, okay, K-I-S-S, K-I-S-S, you know, to help us remember. Finally, it's not just about what God wants me to do, but what can I learn about God through the book? Because as we get to know God, you know, it will help us to also learn what it means to become like God, Christ-likeness. So um, always ask yourself this question, what have I learned about God today? God is compassionate, God is gracious, and that's what we are supposed to be. Finally, the questions that uh, you have in mind, God knows everything. So it's always good to just, um, you know, ask God some of the questions that you might have. Okay. All right. Okay. With that, um, we're going to move on to the first quote that I wanted to share with you tonight. Because it has to do with Joshua chapter 9. If you are ready, here we go. If you, if for those who are new, um, if you see a line, that tells you that actually there's a blank for you to fill up. All right. Okay. So uh, if you see a line, where is it below on top? That tells you that there's a blank that you need to fill up. You need to fill it up in your notes. Okay. So this is um, by Martin Luther. 
He said, peace if possible, truth at all costs. In other words, we should make peace. As far as it depends on us, let's live in peace with people. However, we must not compromise truth. This is what we're going to cover today from the book of Joshua, chapter 9. So have that in mind. Can I just pray for you and pray for us so that the Lord will just um, speak to us. Please join me in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for loving us. And the Lord, and your glory unfolds every day. As we look at the heavens and the earth, as we look at um, our lives, we are thankful. So now, Lord, even as we come before you, the greatest love of our lives, we want to pray that, Lord, you open our eyes to behold wonderful truths of your law. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Help us so that God, we can understand and to know your word. Not just be hearers, but be doers of your word as well. Bless our time. Now, even as your servant dearly loved by you, speak for your word. May the words that come out from my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you. Thank you, God. Bless our time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. What is the book of Joshua all about? It can be divided into two main portions uh, or two main uh, segments. One is the conquer and divide. Now we are still trying to finish up the first part to conquer, to conquer the land. We'll talk about dividing the land later. And uh, we believe that the key verse is found in Joshua 1.8. Joshua 1.8. With that, uh, you have your, if you have your notes with you, can I just give you about one minute to try to fill up the blanks? It's uh, scripture memory. Don't refer to your Bible. All right, try to fill it up. i give you one minute to do so. Uh, this is like a quiz, all right? So uh, uh, you realize um, that uh, if you have all the notes, all this while, the notes I've given to you, uh, I actually um, remove more and more words along the way. Hopefully by end of uh, the book, Joshua 24, you can memorize the whole verse. Okay, so just fill it up. i give you a minute to do so. Then we will just... Um, Look at the answer. Give you a minute to just fill in the blanks. Okay, it's okay. All right, all right. Okay, let's take a look at answers. Allow me to read to you. This book of the law refers to the first five books of um, the Bible. We talk about that uh, in Joshua chapter one. Shall not depart from your mouth. Talking about, um, you know, she talking to Joshua that you shall meditate on it day and night. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful. To do everything written in it or according to what all that is written in it. In other words, it's not good enough just to know. You must do something about it. Then you will be prosperous and you will have good success. We talk about what success means in this book. It's basically to, to conquer and to divide for Joshua. So it may mean different things to us, but basically it's to fulfill what God um, called for our life so that we might please God. Okay, so there's the um, memory verse. Uh, give me a thumbs up if let's say you managed to get all correct. Yeah, I can't see also. So anyway, yeah, all right. Just encourage you to do so. Now, let's move on. Let's break up the, the book of Joshua. Um, believe that uh, Joshua can be divided into five parts. Okay. First, the commission of Joshua. Enter the land. So they have entered the land. They cross uh, the Jordan River. As they cross Jordan River, now they are about to, they already started conquering the land. They defeated uh, uh, and conquered Jericho and also uh, Ai, and then divide the land. And also then finally, we'll talk about the death of uh, Joshua. Why is this book written? We believe the purpose you know, um, is given in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11, that says, now these things happen to them as an example that they were written down for our instruction, for us, 
on whom the end of the ages has come. In other words, this is actually for us to learn and to, uh, to draw lessons so that uh, we will know how to better live our life uh, pleasing to God. So the book of Joshua. Remember, wilderness is not the destination. The promised land is the destination. So don't wander around, you know, go round and round. Because if we do that, then that brings us to the topic for tonight. We do not want to miss God's best for our lives. We do not want to miss God's best for our lives. We want to feed the banks. This is what I'm going to do. All right, for tonight, I want to engage. engage some of you to just uh, participate and how am I going to do that? I'm going to get some of you to read the verses uh, also for me to take a break you know, uh, but, but I just want to get you involved, you know, participate so I can get to hear your voice as well, you know, so that it's not just uh, me. And second thing is also um, I may be asking you to do certain things like reflection, you know, uh, a few in blanks, you know, so uh, please uh, join me so that um, you will be more interactive alright, hopefully that helps um, let me just begin with uh, a, a quick story about um, what we're going to talk about tonight. The pastor was telling uh, his uh, congregation or asking his congregation, uh, how many of you have read uh, Joshua 25? Raise your hand. And interestingly, quite a number of them raised their hand. He said, I, I, so he said, great, you know, put down your hands. Uh, and I want to share with you uh, for the topic, you know, today is stop lying because there's no Joshua chapter 25. Yeah. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about lying we're going to talk about lying and how deception can destroy our destiny so with that we're going to look at a text can i first get uh eugene eugene are you there can you read for us this uh yes of verses? course i'm here can wonderful you hear me? so good to, yes so good to hear your good voice see you <laughs> thanks for yeah this okay lesson. yeah what do you want me to read this 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 passage right Yes, is uh, okay? Uh, Joshua 9, Thank of you course, so much. I can do that. Yeah, I can see it as well. Just hang on. I'm just... Okay. Don't as worry. soon as all the kings we were beyond the Jordan in the hill country and in the lowland, all along the coast of the Great Sea towards Lebanon, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites heard of this, they gathered together as one to fight against Joshua and Israel. But when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and to, to Ai, they on their part acted with cunning and went and made ready provisions and took worn out sacks for their donkeys and wineskins, worn out and torn and mended with worn out patch sandals on their feet and worn out clothes. And all their provisions were dry and crumbling. Thank you so much, brother. Good to hear. Right, your yeah. voice yeah the lord bless you okay thank you. thank you so much the next one can i get uh geraldine geraldine are you here Geraldine? Yes, no? yes, yes i am okay geraldine you can you read for us verse six <laughs> just a minute i think there's a lag okay uh the yeah rest. can you hear me yes and verse six and they were and Joshua in the camp at Gilgal and said to him and to the men of Israel, distant country, so now make a covenant with us. But the men of Israel said to the high he, he writes, Perhaps you live among us, then how can we make a covenant with you? They said to Joshua, We are your servants. And Joshua said to them, Who are Are you still there? Okay, allow me to continue. Okay, from a very distant country, your servants have come because of the name of the Lord your God. For we have heard a report of him and all that he did in Egypt. Thanks, Geraldine. Thank you so much. Yeah, you know, um, thank you. Okay, um, let's hear from another one. How about, uh, oh, I saw another Geraldine. You can unmute yourself. Geraldine, are you there? Another Geraldine? Okay, maybe not. 
Okay, uh, Naomi, are you there, Naomi? Uh, yes, I'm here. Okay, can you read for us the next uh, few verses? Okay, verse 10, And all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to Sihon the king of Hashbron, and to Ob king of Bashan, who live in Ashtaroth, so our elders and all the inhabitants of our countries said to us, Take provisions in your hand for the journey, and go to meet them, and say to them, We are your servants. Come now, make a covenant with us. Here is our bread. It was still warm when we took it from our houses as our food for the journey on the day we set out to come to you. But now behold, it is dry and crumbly. These wineskins were new when we filled them, and behold, they have burst. And these garments and sandals of ours are worn out from the very long journey. Thanks, uh, Naomi. Send my regards to Jackson. The Lord bless you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Geraldine, is Geraldine there? She just texted me, Geraldine, are you there? Yeah. Okay, great. Can you read for us the next few verses? Oh, okay. So the men took some of their provisions, but did not ask counsel from the Lord. And Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant with them to let them leave. And the leaders of the congregation swore to them. At the end of three days after they had made a covenant with them, they heard that they were their neighbors and that they lived among them. And the people of Israel set out and reached their cities on the third day. Now their cities were Gibeon, Shepherah, Beroth, and Kerif Jerum. But the people of Israel did not attack them because the leaders of the congregation had sworn to them by the Lord, the God of Israel. Then all the congregation murmured against the leaders. Thanks, Geraldine. Uh, please don't unmute. Yongjie, can you read for us? I heard yeah, you are there. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Yeah, Yongjie. Yeah. Okay, but all the leaders said to all the congregation, we have sworn to them by the Lord, the God of Israel, and now we may not touch them. This we, this we will do to them. Let them live, lest wrath be upon us, because of the oath that we, saw, that we swore to them. And the leaders said to them, let them live. So they became clutters of wood and drawers of water, for all the congregation, just as the leaders had said to them. Joshua summoned them and he said to them, Why did you deceive us, saying we are very far from you when you dwell among us? Now, therefore, you are cursed, and some of you shall never be anything but servants, cutters of wood, and drawers of water for the house of my God. Thank you so much, Yongjie. Yeah, anybody else in your house? No. <laughs> But this is uh, yeah, a test. Yeah, I better not be. Okay, thanks, uh, Yongjie and Jardine. So good to hear your voices. Yeah, okay. The Lord bless you. Okay, the last one. Let's have... Uh, Enkit, are you here now? Enkit. Enkit, are you there? Okay. Maybe uh, Faith. Faith, are you there? Faith, what? I'm here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, Enkit, can you read for us the last few verses? Okay, they answered Joshua, because it was told to your servants for certainty that the Lord your God had commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you. So we failed greatly for our lives because of you and did this thing. And now behold, we are in your hand. Whatever seems good and right in your sight, to do to us, do it. So he did this to them and delivered them out of the hand of the people of Israel. And they did not kill them. But Joshua made them that day cutters of wood and drawers of water for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord to this day in the place that we should choose. Thanks, Enkit. The Lord bless you. Bless Thank you so much. Good to hear from you. Yeah, you sound like Joshua. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Okay, uh, the Lord bless the reading of uh, His Word. I thought uh, make it a little bit more interactive and, um, and so that, you know, you, uh, you know, um, yeah, you can know some of the brothers and sisters that are in our midst as well. Okay, uh, let's do a very quick recap and then start with uh, verse 1. We're going to zoom into the text. If you have your notes with you, that will be very helpful. All right, so it says, I know it begins with, as soon as the kings, all the kings, heard about what happened. Now, let's do a, a very quick recap. You know, uh, 
Joshua chapter 8 ends with um, Israel reaffirmed their commitment to the Lord as soon as that happened. What comes to your mind? I don't know about you. Sometimes it's like, I commit myself to God. This is a, this is a new season. You know, I'm just so excited. You know, we, we just uh, defeated um, Jericho and then uh, AI. And then now we are ready. We are ready, God, for more. As soon as that happened, we expect something great, something wonderful to happen. But the first verse tells us that all the kings, all of them, all those along the great sea, and you, and then the, the, the people were named, and after they heard about all this, they come together as one to fight against Joshua and Israel. Unlike Jericho and AI, one is to one. Now no, one is to all. One is to all, all against the Israelites. The first study for behind the study, which I want to bring to your attention is pay attention to the tension. For those who are new, um, study behind the study is basically, I want you to see that when we study this passage, how do we then better study the passage that's before us? That's what we call the study behind the study. Every session, I hope to give you every, at least seven studies behind the study. With that, the first one is the tension. I want you to just have this idea that now you are the Israelite. You, are, you, are, you could be thinking that maybe, you know, we're going to defeat one after the other, one after the other. After the second one, oh, it's not going to happen this way anymore. All of them come together as one to go against you. The tension is there. In fact, um, it is a very fast-moving uh, book. You know, I'm not sure about you. I, my challenge for you is to read uh, the book of Joshua once through and then have, have, have a feel of what is it like. Because the, the phrase, as soon as, repeats as, at least 10 times already, you know, from Joshua chapter 1 to Joshua chapter 9. Already 10 times, just 9 chapters, as soon as, as soon as, as soon as, tran some translation put it this way, immediately, immediately. Not so much that news travel very fast that um, the kings heard about it, but have an idea that now Israelite may not have the time to act. They heard about it. What did they what did they hear? What did they hear? That is the question. I don't think they are referring to renewing of uh, the covenant or reaffirming you know, their commitment to God. I believe what they heard was the Israelite had conquered Jericho and Ai. That's what they heard. So the southern kings all come together, all Oh, gather together against Israelites, ready to fight. I'm not sure about the Israelites. Now, you must understand that the Canaanites, that they were not very friendly with each other most of the time. But this time around, it's different. Came together with one common enemy, the people of God. Not one, not two, but five. Or maybe more than that. Yet God is greater than them all. God is greater than them all. Let's take a look after that, what happened. He talked about another group of people for the Gideon. Eh? Why? I thought we're talking about the five kings. We're, we're waiting to see what's, what's going to happen. How come now talk about another group of people? This is what I want to bring you to the second study behind the study for tonight. Interrupt. You need to know that sometimes when you read the Bible, um, don't halfway through, uh, you realize that, A, hey, there is a passage that just chucked inside. And then you, you think, hey, how come no, there's no relationship between you know, the first part and the second part and the second part and the third part? How come? Because there's an interrupt. Um, <clears throat> Paul's epistles, you know, sometimes there's something like that. If you don't see that as an interrupt, you may confuse yourself, all right, because you are talking about two different things. However, I believe that these two, it seems that uh, there is an interrupt, yet they are interrelated. We'll talk more about the five kings later uh, next week uh, in Joshua chapter 10. It is an advertisement now, right? Advertisement. So I'll uh, come back uh, next Wednesday. We'll talk about Joshua chapter 10. You know what happens to the five kings, okay? All right, so this is a uh, review. Okay, now we're going to talk about another group uh, tonight, which is the um, uh, Gideons, okay? So what happened? They also heard about what happened. 
what Joshua did to Jericho and Ai. It is not a change of topic. We're talking about the same thing. You know, uh, how do we know? Sometimes it's like you know uh, when you uh, ask uh, someone to help. Maybe for now, say, can you buy some chicken rice? No. Then you talk about what toilet paper. No, no, no. We're not talking about toilet paper. We're talking about chicken rice. Chicken rice. You know. So, so we need to know that you know in 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 cases like that, we need to we need to see what God is actually trying to present to us so that we will be very clear. Even though both of them, or both cases, heard about what happened, their approaches were different. The rest were ready to fight, but the Gibeonites had something else in mind. Two strategies were used here. First, head-to-head -head combat. The five kings were ready to um, fight against um, uh, Israelites, but the Gibeonites used deception. The phrase, they acted with cunning, tells us that they were about to deceive the Israelites. That reminds us of the evil one. You see, sometimes the devil comes like a roaring lion, like only, he's not the real lion, trying to devour us, just like a devouring lion. That's how he attacks God's people. He come and scare us. He come and scare us so that, you know, we'll be afraid. They come not just in one, they come in many to scare us. But sometimes the devil comes like a serpent, a deceiving serpent, like how he deceived Eve. Did God really say that? It doesn't sound very aggressive, but very deceiving. One, we can see that they are coming, but the other one, we may not, not so easy to detect. It could be because that the Gibeonites was thinking that they will be defeated. After all, you know, how are we going to defeat these people? You know, they just go walk round and round, round and round, round and round, and then they, they shouted, the city collapsed. How to fight with these type of people? Maybe we should try something different. Lie to them. Deceive them. And to keep ourselves safe. After all, if a lie can do the job, why not? Why do so much? Why fight? Just tell some lies and we still get the same result. First of all, we need to, we need to ask ourselves, why is it a lie? You see, uh, verse 6 says that uh, you know, the Gibeonites came to uh, Gibeonites came to uh, Israelites and say, we came from a very far away land. We have come from a distant country. Now, you, you need to know that the Gibeons, you know, that the Tao is actually just the next city to be destroyed. I want you to refer to your notes again. There's a map that you can refer to. Can you just circle um, Gilgal, which... Uh, where Israelites uh, were, and then of that, um, Gibeon, all right? I mean, I spelled that wrongly. So it's G-I-B-E-O-N, okay? It looks something like this. It's actually 40 kilometers away, not too far not too far. In fact, um, they were already in uh, Joshua's list to be destroyed. Why not make peace with them? Oh, this is where uh, it comes to the next study behind the study using cross references. That will help us to better understand the context. So allow me to just read to you. God told Moses, or Moses told the people, when you draw near to a city to fight against them, offer terms of peace to it. Okay? Sounds like it's okay. And if it responds to you peacefully and it opens to you then all the people who are found in it shall do forced labor for you and shall serve you not so bad free labor but if it makes no peace with you but make wars against you then you shall be switching and when the lord your god gives it to your hand you shall put all its males to the sword sound like you can make peace with them but take a look at the next few verses. 
But in the cities of these people that the Lord your God is giving you for an inheritance, you shall save alive nothing that bruises. But you shall devote uh, devote them to total destructions. And he named all this. God actually named all these. The Hittites and the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Pisazites, you know, Perizzites, and the Hivites and the Japhethites. So basically, this few group of them must be destroyed. You might be saying that, but and there was no um, Gibeonites. So, is that okay? Actually, it's not. Why? Because Gibeonites are also known as the Hivites. They were the same group of people. With that, they had to be destroyed. They had to be destroyed. Now, could it be that uh, the Gibeonites Knights um, knew about the law, so they use it for their own protection? We don't know. Um, don't forget that the devil also used God's word against us. But how did they do that? Let's take a look. Over here, I highlighted using three different colors because I want you to see that there are actually three ways of deception that we need to be very careful with. The first one is what we call appearance. The second is false evidence. Finally, lies. You see, uh, appearance, let's take a look. They pretend. So um, they wore uh, sandals that are worn out. They wore uh, clothes that are worn out. Looks like you know they have traveled from, from, you know, from a very, very far away land. Force evidence, they brought up things and show the Israelites. Take a look at the, uh, you know, the white skin, already torn. You, know, you look, look at our bread in the provisions, they were dry. So these are things that they show the Israelites. Take a look, take a look. You know, all this tells you that we came from a far away land. And then of course, with their mouth, they say, we have come from a distant country. Come on, make a covenant with us. Whoa. Sounds good. And more, not more than that, you know, uh, not, not, not only that, they, they, they offer, we will be your servants. Come on, masters. You, you will be our master and we will be your servant. Furthermore, they say, oh, because of the name of the Lord, your God. They even use the name of God. They even say, because of God, we are here. We can be your servant. Sound like we have the same king, same God. Same, same, la, same, same, la. What sound like is of God may not be of God. Let me say this again. What may sound like is of God may not be of God. The enemies came prepared, but the Israelites were not. What happened after that? Let's take a look. You see, the reality is the problems, the main problem lies with not with the Gibeonites, rather than it is the Israelites. The next few verses tells us something more. I give you some time to pen it down. The problem lies with them not seeking God, not asking God. They did not ask counsel from the Lord. That was the problem. Rather, they asked the Gibeonites, Who are you? Where do you come from? Why not ask God? God would have told them. But God did not. Because they did not ask. Why didn't they, why didn't they ask? Let me just give you some time to think about it. For me, when I was thinking about it, I just list out a few. How come sometimes we don't ask God? Oh, maybe because no time. We're so busy. Now uh, at home, wow, worse, even more busy. No time. Don't need to ask God. Or maybe God is so slow. Ask Him. Uh, sometimes God very busy. 
not that I'm busy. God is busy. So it takes so long for him to reply. So slow to speak. Or perhaps we may be asking, you know, what can go wrong? Come on. They want to be our servants. They're not trying to hear the fight. What? So what, what can go wrong? Or perhaps, hey, people want to get a job done for us. No, just let them do it. Nah. You know, what's the problem? Let them do. It's okay. Free labor, free of charge. The whole city, wow. Why not? Or maybe it's because they have found confidence in the flesh rather than in God. Rather than in God. The Israelite have, could have relied on the flesh rather than in God. What do I mean? Let's take a look. They could have depends on their senses, the five senses. I want to just encourage you when you read the Bible, read with imagination. You know, sometimes, you know, um, imagine that you are sitting with Jesus, you know, Jesus sitting down there and say, look, look, you know, look at the sky, the birds, God take care of the birds. No, no, look, look, look at the flowers. Smell the flowers, smell the flowers. Smell the flowers. Wow. God take care of the flowers. God will take care of you. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Feel the flowers. Look with your eyes. Look at the birds. Listen. They're singing. God will take care of them. We need to use our five senses when we read the Bible. But we need to also be careful that we don't rely on them. With that, I'm going to ask you to do a simple exercise. In your notes again, um, I wrote down you know, the use of five senses. What they, what they, what they, what they, what they. You try to figure it up and then see whether you can figure it up. Yeah, you, can, you can guess what is it. I give you about maybe half a minute. Not, not so difficult. So yeah, just take a look and then uh, try to fill it up. What are the five senses? Okay. I don't know whether you're okay or not, but I'm going to move on. All right. So now, take a look at these few verses. See whether you can identify and then uh, put them into the different uh, category. Uh, for example, okay, uh, the first one, let me give you the answer. What they saw. So, what did they see? In these few uh, uh, verses, can you highlight them? You should highlight your Bible, dirty your Bible. I think uh, I will share with you all. Dirty Christian, clean Bible. Clean Christian, dirty Bible. Dirty your Bible. The Lord use it to tutor us and help us to grow. Okay, give you a little bit of clue. This is how you can highlight your Bible. We have come from a distant country. What day? Heard. Okay. The bread still warm, you know, but now feel it's cold already. Touch it. Touch it. Hot, cold. What they touched. What they saw was worn out clothes and sandals. What they heard was we came from a land far, far away. What they touched dry, cold, bread. What the smell? I'm not too sure. I put black because it's actually not day. But I just wonder, you know, whether you know they could smell, you know, wow, never bathed for so long. Ayo. What they taste? Could they even try the bread? I'm not sure. Something for us to think about. But use your five senses wisely. But don't rely on them. They choose to use their senses than what God has to say. That reminds us of this verse. My brothers and sisters, we must learn to walk by faith, not by sight. That's God's desire for us. Not what you can see, not what you can hear, not what you can feel, what not can you smell, what not you can taste, but to walk by faith. What's faith? Faith comes from hearing the hearing through the word of Christ. We build our faith upon the word of God and we learn to walk by faith according to the word of God. Obedience is only possible if we know what God wants from us. And what God wants from us comes from the living word. But they did not even ask God. And Joshua did this. 
he make peace with them and make a covenant with them. Oh dear. Oh no. Together with the leaders, three days later, they got to know they were neighbors. That's bad. That's bad. Because they just failed to obey what God has asked them to do. How did they find out that they were neighbors? Maybe openly they have uh, admitted. Maybe they overheard because they were rejoicing. Hey, why are they so happy? But definitely they didn't hear that from the Lord. They were deceived. I want, to talk a little, I want to talk to you a little bit about lying. Okay, all right. I'm not going to teach you how to lie. All right, so please, um, I just more to learn to discern. You know, yeah. How do you define a great liar? How do you define? Oh, this one is a very good liar. This one is not so good. As a, as a teacher, you know, I sadly, you know, I have students who tell lies. You know, uh, but we need to tutor them and teach them. You know, but some of them really good at it. You know, really very very good. You know? Uh, I know, but it's just that we cannot give him uh, a, 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 an award right now. Yeah. So, how do you define a great liar? I think it's when people believe what they say. When people believe what they say, they're so good at it. They came and said, "We came to seek God," but actually, they came to seek something else. And they talk about, "Oh, we came because of your God." Wow. Something very close to our heart. I don't know about you. Sometimes people come to church and say that, oh, we came to seek our God. Wow. Sounds really good, no? Furthermore, let's take a look. Not just talking about and using the names of the name of God, but also listen to what they say and what they did not say. They say that, oh, we heard, we also heard, you know, uh, yeah, you know, um, the five kings heard about this, you know, um, uh, and then we also heard and you say, we heard that, you know, you had defeated the two kings and then, you know, uh, this happened quite some, some time ago, you know, uh, before you cross, you know, over to Jordan, you defeated the two kings. They did not even mention Jericho and Ai, their neighbors as well. Wow, quite good. Yeah, you know, very logical, right? You know, we, we are walking, you know, so we have been, we came and then we didn't even know that you had defeated Jericho and AI. We didn't even mention them because we didn't know that, uh, you know, um, them very well and they were not our neighbors, you know. So, um, again, not trying to teach you how to lie, but discern, discern. And actually, uh, if you listen to what they say, uh, or their stories, uh, there are a lot of loopholes, you know. I, I don't know, you know, I, I like to do this, you know, when I study, I just say, God, you know, quite convincing one. But actually, you think about it, uh, maybe not, no. I give you an example. If I know that I'm going to travel to somewhere very far, I need to bear in mind that I, I need to, I may need to, I likely I would have to return back to my city. If the Israelites don't buy in, I must make sure I have enough food to last me before I, I, I return back to my own city. So I, I should have more than enough food. I will have brought something that perhaps can last the journey. Now, if the second, if it's so far away, still long, long, you know, uh, time before Israelite reach their city, then why bother? Just wait for the Israelite to come at the doorstep, then we surrender and say, sorry, you know, uh, we don't want to fight, you know, can we just surrender to you? Why came all the way down? Hey, eh? doesn't make sense, Lee. Why don't stay home, stay safe, and then wait for Israelites to turn up and then surrender. I mean, also, why keep the dry bread, you know, unless they want to eat as nachos? No, right? So why you keep all the bread that you, you knew that you're not going to eat anymore? Torn wine skins. Throw them away. Why are you holding on to the torn wine, wine skin? Why are, you, why are you trying to show us? Think about it. It doesn't make sense. It's meant to deceive us. i like you to also think about the other scenario that did not happen here. I'm not encouraging you to do that, but sometimes it helps so that we, we, we know what we are missing. What if Joshua came to God and said, God, what do you think? What do you think God will say? I try to guess. La. I think God will say, Joshua, they are your neighbors. Sir. Full stop. 
Finish already. End of story. Destroy them. Finish. But today we have Joshua chapter 9. Because they did not ask. God would have told them, they were your neighbors, Joshua. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. For if anyone lack wisdom, he should ask God. God will give generously to all without fighting for. Even if they say you doubt it, it's okay. God will give to us generously without fighting for. But Joshua failed to do so. They should have asked God, but they did not. In the end, they broke God's law and made a covenant with the enemies. The next few verses tell us that the first murmuring in the promised land. Oh, I'll highlight that. I think that's interesting. Now, not from Joshua, but from the congregations. Very interesting because you see, um, the people of God were, were murmur, you know, because, and then it was their fault. But this time around, it was their leaders who failed to obey God. They swore, you know, sworn to God and to say that, you know, God you know, will not destroy them. And now they say they will not touch them. I'm not too sure about you, but um, actually what the leaders did was the right thing to do in the eyes of God. We need to honor our words. We cannot let one sin leads to another. We fail, yes, we fail, but we need to honor our words, especially when we are being pressured as leaders. Be careful. Don't let one sin lead to another. Yes, it's a mistake. Then we just have to admit, ask God for forgiveness, and then move on. So let's find out why is this a big mistake. This helps us if we know the background. So that brings us to the fourth study. It's our fifth study behind the study, and that is um, the background. You see, um, Gibeon, this city actually consists of four other uh, cities, the names that were mentioned uh, in the scriptures just now. So if you are able to conquer this, um, four, these four cities, Israelite by then will have quite a strong, secure football. Jericho, AI, and these four cities. And these four cities, they are, the people there are not weak people. They are powerful. They are strong. That's why they are very cunning. In fact, they were larger than AI. One of the largest uh, city in Canaan. In the, right in the center. Right in the center. Just how you look at the map, it's right in the center. And because they were right in the center, they were very influential. It's just like Singapore, you're right in the middle. So you're very influential. And it's a very important city. Why? Now, by now, I think I can give you a little idea of how this uh, conquer came about. I'm not sure whether the uh, past few pastors, they have made mention that I may have missed it. But you see, when they enter, they can, came from, they can come from any, any way. But they attack right from the center first then later to the south and then to the north. The, the question is, why in this sequence? This is because if I take over the center, the north and the south will not be able to work together. Maybe they will come from both sides, but at least they won't come together against us. So it's important for us to take the center and then we will take the south followed by the north which we won't talk about it moving forward. So the sequence is important. Unfortunately, after Jericho and AI, they couldn't capture the four main cities. And the five southern kings were coming. Something for us to think about. It's a big mistake. If you think that it's just a small city, no. It's a big mistake. And the third day, they arrive at these cities. The names are given there. I just wonder, you know, how it will be like, you know, if let's say I'm the leader, and I'm just walking, and then after that, wondering where is the city, and then walk, 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 you know, uh, one day, you know, second day. Huh? Third day, we arrive. I thought it's very far away. Ah, uh, just next door. 
just just next door they reach i just wonder they must be thinking what is this man you know they are just beside us and then we we didn't even know you know of course you know they were made to surf cut wood you know and then of course uh, you know carry water you know okay now not that bad but don't forget this it's still not god's will even it may seems or sounds good it is not god's will for them i shared uh, in uh, joshua chapter 3 this quote with you let me just repeat this because i think that it's appropriate to just bring this up again outside the will of god there's nothing i want inside the will of god there's nothing i fear are you in the will of god or are you out of the will of god don't be deceived the devil come to steal kill and destroy don't be deceived after all if they ever lie to you once can you still trust him can you still trust him all right, we should give people um, a second chance, like uh, what Pastor Fadi shared with us the last session. God is the God of the second chances. Yeah, but I think we also need to be careful. To be careful. The last few verses tells us a little bit more. Where Joshua summoned there and said, Why? Why do you deceive us? You say you stay very far away. You know, three days, not even three days, we already reached, you know, uh, your, your city. In fact, uh, uh, some uh, scholar actually wrote that if you do a quick march, Within one day, you can reach the city. So Joshua was so upset. He said, you're, you're cursed, you know. You, you're you're going to just serve us, you know. You're going to just, you know, um, well, this is not good. Uh. So you're going to be our servant. You're going to be our servant. You, you're going to be servant. You're going to be servant. Wherever God calls you, you're going to be our servant. Take a look at how the Gimineers, um, how they responded. You realize that they didn't complain. In fact, uh, if you read the Bible through, right, you, you realize that uh, uh, they, they became servants of God. No evidence has been uh, recorded, as far as I, I know, that um, this uh, Gimenez actually create troubles for the Israelites. But certainly, they didn't uh, create troubles, but they did cause some problems, which we will talk about in Joshua chapter 10. Uh, next Wednesday. Again, I encourage you to come. The reality is, um, perhaps one of them wrote, you know, um, in um, the commentary, or uh, I, I can't remember where I wrote it, you know, but in my study, my boy, I, I wrote this down. If we make a mistake, admit it, and make your mistake work for you. If you make a mistake, admit it, and make your mistake work for you. And then what? What? I put a, a cross there. That's hard. Why? Because the thing is, this mistake is not supposed to be yeah you know it's not for you to, it's like if, if you do it um you know unintentionally or it's a we, we all learn from our mistakes but this mistake wasted you should have asked god and then that's it some people say that god has a plans for the enemies uh i think maybe we are reading too much into it the point is this perhaps they have missed god's best for them Coming to the end of this uh, chapter, usually we want to do some reflection. I want you to just reflect, you know, for tonight uh, on your own. There is a table, again, uh, refers to your notes. Okay, there's a table. Uh, and in this table, we have uh, rehab and also um, it'd be nice. I want you to just list out, you know, you see rehab light, correct? The Gibeonites also light, and then uh, Rehab was not destroyed. Gibeonites also uh, were safe. So there were some similarities and differences. Can I just get you to just pen it down on your own? Just try to uh, you know, recap and then after that, fill it up. All right, I just give you a minute to do so yeah, on your own. And then see whether you can identify, uh, you know, as you reflect, can you learn something from these two groups of people? Okay, I give you a minute to do so. Can? If you are with your spouse or with um, children, you know, I mean, they know the story. Yeah, just do it as a family, you know. What do you think? What do you think? And then just fill in the blanks, okay? Do it as an uh, exercise. I give you a while to think about it. Okay, by the way, there are many, you know. Yeah, I can list at least 10 or more than that. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it's yours now. Just one minute. 
to think about it. Then given that is so. Given that is the one who just now we say you see. Okay. All right. I want to hear from some of you. Um, I'm not sure whether you want to type it uh, in the chat group or because um, a few people are mute. It may be quite chaotic. <laughs> I never tried it before with 145 people. So maybe you want to just key in some of your answer at the chat group, you know, and then we can we can we can discuss a little bit. Yeah. Feel free to do so if you want to. Okay, looks like nobody is responding. Okay, have. Okay, thanks, Vivian. Uh, Rehab is righteous, and uh, their one is uh, yeah, is cunning, but their thing is that the uh, Vivian is uh, out, outright, you know, uh, deceiving. Okay, thank you so much. Yep, agree. Rehab want to save his family. I mean, they also want to save their families, but the thing is that uh, yeah, uh, the Vivian is very deceiving. Okay. Any others? Just waiting for a few more. Okay, Edward, thank you so much. They lie to save God's people and themselves. Okay, yeah. Thanks, Edward. They both lie, but both receive God's mercy. I like this. Thank you so much, uh, Eugene. Okay, for those who are not sure, you know, where I'm looking at, basically uh, under the chat, you click. It will come up with this Zoom group chat where uh, the answers are, are, are posted. There. Okay, maybe one more or okay. So Rahab deceive uh, God's enemies, and then uh, the other one is actually deceive uh, God's people. Wow, I like this. Who's that? Oh, Pastor Fadi. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> it is something new for me. Yeah, thanks, uh, Pastor Fadi. Okay. Oh, it's Felicia Chin. Okay, okay. Thanks. Uh, okay, I read wrongly. Keep thinking about uh, Pastor Felicia. Yeah, there we got a meeting with her this morning. Okay. Thanks, Felicia Chin. I thought that was uh, that's very insightful. Thanks, uh, Felicia. Uh, Felicia Chin. Yeah, yeah. This is very insightful. Thank you so much. Yeah, I didn't have it in my list. Thank you. Okay, maybe one more, Serene. One believe in God, one believe in their own ways, their cunning ways. Thanks, Serene. All right. Yeah. Okay. Maybe a few more just for you to think about. Maybe you already have the answers. Okay. The other one is uh, Linda said both asked for a promise. All right. Uh, both heard about what God has done. I don't know whether you have that as well. Uh, NK said that uh, Rahab followed Israel and the Gimeonites uh, maintained their own practices. Yeah. Uh, both have bad history. Both has bad history. And of course, uh, one is uh, both are sinners. One is, uh, was a prostitute, the other one is a, a liar. Uh, hey, by the way, uh, side track a bit. Talk about um, prostitute. I share with some uh, groups that I mentor. Sometimes when we interact with prostitutes, we must always bear this in mind. They actually, they were the victims most of the time. Almost all the time. Why do I say that? You see, as a teacher, when I ask them, uh, Okay, children, today's topic is uh, your ambition. What do you want to become when you grow up? And then say, oh, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a lawyer, you know, I want to be a, 
um, you know, my bus driver, you know, I want to be a, a hawker. Never have I in my life ever hear anyone say, I want to be a positive. Nobody ever said this before. Nobody. Why? So why would people want to be prostitutes? Unless they have no choice. So I think there's something that we need to just have that in mind. I love how Gary puts it. Given a choice, nobody wants to sell their souls. Nobody wants to sell their bodies. Nobody. Please understand. Nobody. They also want to do well. They also want to, uh, you know, be able to give God glory. I'm not saying that, you know, prostitutes, they are not giving God glory per se. I, I, I'm not into this argument now. But I'm just saying, my brand sisters, let's just have that in mind. Sometimes we may be too judgmental. Let's learn to see from the other person's point of view. All right, coming back to this, um, they were target of um, attack by the Israelites. And then um, interestingly, both of them um, left a very rich history. I'll just give you a few. Um, of course, really have you know, um, I think one of the pastors will have shared that uh, she became the ancestors of uh, Jesus. But um, but um, the Gibeon, basically, they became a priestly city, as you read further. All right? And Solomon actually um, put um, the Ark of the Covenant in their city before he built, uh, he built the Temple of God. And in fact, uh, one of the David's mighty men, was a Gibeonite. Wow, not, not, not so bad. Um, God spoke to Solomon at um, Gibeon, the same city. So Solomon was there and God spoke to him in First Kings chapter 3. The um, Gibeonites also helped to rebuild the wall uh, during uh, Nehemiah's time and one of the prophets during Jeremiah's time. Interestingly, um, actually, King Saul tried to destroy them. But actually, when King Saul tried to destroy them, God brought about a famine to, 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 to um, so-called um, um, punish the, the Israelites. And then David has to ask God to, to help, to forgive. Some would say that uh, hey, God seems to show mercy, like one of, um, one of you mentioned. But brothers and sisters, bear this in mind. When God shows us mercy, that doesn't mean that God is pleased. Can I say this uh, hard truth again? Sometimes God shows us mercy doesn't mean that He's pleased. I don't know about you. God shows me mercy every day. I think uh, sometimes, you know, I ask myself, you know, does that mean that God is pleased with me? May not. The last study behind the study I want to bring to you tonight is what we call the genre. This is actually a historical narrative. Why is this important? It's because um, I, I might have mentioned this before, but let's get this right so that uh, I think this is a very good point to talk about this. You see, um, looking at this, Rahab, looking at um, uh, what happened in Joshua chapter 9, is it okay to tell lies? Of course, we know the answer is no. La, all right? Okay. In fact, this is two out of the three failures uh, uh, of uh, the Israelite you know, that we will, we will talk about in the book of Joshua. And Joshua was humbled, and uh, I, I'm sure he, he, he would have felt uh, a bit embarrassed. Yeah. Um, though God uh, overruled Joshua's mistake, who must bear this in mind, they pay a high price. And the lying is still not of God. You see, John Rear helped us to understand how we should approach the text. Narrative basically is telling you a story. So when we tell you the story, we tell you the full story, we're not telling you that this is right or this is wrong per se. We're telling you a story. So you cannot say, oh, it's okay to tell lies and you're safe. God will show you mercy. This is how you interpret the scriptures. It's not like that. No. When you want to know what God has to say about the moral laws, you go to Exodus, Deuteronomy. Thou shalt not lie. You want to know what God has to say about how we should live our life, Go to the epistles, the doctrines. You don't go to the, the, the narratives and the story. Yes, perhaps there are values there where Jesus uh, teaches us. But the thing is that we need to bear this in mind that this is telling us a story. The purpose is to give us an account. It is not giving us the doctrine. 
So knowing the genre will help us to better know how to interpret and apply the text. So I don't want tonight you go back and say, oh, so it's okay to tell lies and then just pray for mercy. Oh, no, no, it doesn't work like that, no. Don't, 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 don't even try that. It doesn't work. In fact, I just want to point you to Jesus, how Jesus overcomes it. You see, Jesus was tempted. The devil also lied to him. The devil wants to come like a roaring lion, but he also come as a deceiving serpent. He said, take a look, you know, take a look at the sisters. These are all yours. If you bow down to me, oh, turn the, the, the stone into bread. You are hungry. Come on, Jesus, you can do that. Or throw yourself down. The angels will pick you up. If you are the son of God, do this, do that. Wait, but God just said, Earlier than he is the son of God whom he dearly loved. If Jesus responded like the Israelite to a lie, today we will not be brothers and sisters. We will, be, we will not be zooming in. But Jesus thankfully did not. My question for you tonight is, brothers and sisters, what are some lies that you might have believed in and what God has to say about them? This is your own work, so I'm not going to ask you to do now. But take some time to think about it. Take some time to think about it. I shared with uh, you before how the devil speaks as the first person. He don't say, you are useless. He will say, I am useless. So you think that you are you're talking to yourself. It's not. Sometimes the devil talking to you. I am useless. God will not forgive me. I feel God again. God will not use me. This situation is not to get better. What are the lies that you have believed in? What does God have to say? Go back to the scriptures. Go back to the scriptures. And then resist the devil. Like what Jesus did for us. Okay? With that, let me close with the story. Uh, about don't missing don't miss uh, God's best for our lives, and then we hopefully have some time for question and answer. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, uh, I, I I just thought that maybe let me explain a little bit because after one, maybe some of you will be thinking that why wow, Pastor Kawan always like to talk about his own, you know, a uh, journey and uh, uh, always talk about himself. Yeah. Let me share with you my personal conviction. Because after a while, you will be thinking that wow, this this guy uh, very self centered. No, always talk about himself. You know, uh, you know, uh, uh, low in uh, uh, low in uh, self esteem, you know. Uh, so <laughs> let me just explain. You see, uh, I like to share uh, how I've applied the truth, you know, in my life for a few reasons. One, um, because I believe that when I do that, I share with conviction that it works for me. So that's one. Second thing, when I share um, from my life, actually, what I'm trying to do is that to align my life with the scriptures. You know, it's how I leave this out and I share with you. This is how I apply. So hopefully that will help you to see how I apply in my life. Maybe you can consider how you can apply in your life. So that's where I'm coming from. Also because I think it's important for me to practice what I preach. I, I can talk to you about what people do and all this. I think these are good testimony. Often sometimes we use them as well. But I find that there is a place to share my side of the story. And the best part is I don't ask people for permission. I don't know, I just share because my story. Yeah, I'll just share. Yeah, okay. So with that, let me just share uh, this part. Um, there are three lessons I learned from this uh, story, but I'll, I'll, I'll share you shortly. You see, years ago, um, my vice principal asked me to go in and he says that, Kogwan, you know, you have been taking all the very weak students. Uh, we want you to take the best class next year. Wow, best class? Uh. I say, no, la, I'm not the best. La. Don't, don't let me take the best class. Uh. It, you, you see, um, I counter propose. I say, can I just take the weak ones? I came from uh, so-called, um, my study not so good, you know, when I was younger, and then after that, you know, I struggled a bit, and, and so I, I can understand, you know, the, the, the weaker ones a little bit better. And of course, some of you know that uh, I was involved in Pop Excel, helping the, uh, the community uh, children, you know, so I feel for them. Yeah, all, all the very, very smart ones, I mean, I find it a little bit more difficult to relate to them. Lah. Yeah, so, so, so I, I feel for, for the weaker ones, you know, they, uh, uh, maybe the poor and needy. So, so that's, that's uh, how I being, I'm being wired. Yeah, so I, I told my VP, uh, can I don't do that? Because I think that, you know, I can, uh, I really feel for them and I think they have uh, greater needs. And the VP told me this, and I will never forget. He says that, go on, then you are wrong. 
because the very smart one also have issues, also have needs. You need to learn to manage and figure them out so that you can help them. In my mind, I was like, what? No la, we got needs. No, these people, they're so rich and powerful, so smart, you know. I mean, before I can tell them the answer, they already know what I'm going to ask, you know, for the next question. Oh, they're so smart, what do they need? But, uh, okay la, I, I follow la, I obey, so I just uh, uh, submit. I go by faith, I submit. Actually, my heart is like, wow, teach the best class. Uh. Wow, I don't know whether, you know, why teach the wrong thing? No? Then after the parents complain, how, you know, so, not, after, soon after that, uh, he left, you know, because uh, he was he, he's a VP and then he got uh, promoted, you know, so he has to leave the school. And then after that, a new uh, VP, a new principal took over. And um, so again, I have a choice. Take the best class or the weak class, you know, I can put in my survey to indicate my preference. I thought I should keep my promise. So I, I, I put, um, yeah, you know, I don't mind take the, we call the, the uh, higher ability students. So I just put, okay, you know, I can take the higher ability students, but if the school can give me the weaker ones, uh, I, I would love to do that as well, you know. So, so but I try to keep my promise, uh, yeah. And, um, and he was right. After I took the best class for a few years, I saw that they were needs. I mean, just a uh, quick story, you know, one boy actually got um, 95 marks. And then after that, he tore his paper. I said, what are you doing? So I pulled him out, you know, I went to my office. I gave him a scotch tape. I said, you, you, but he only tear the first cover page. Nah. The, the rest he didn't tear. So, wow, thankfully, you know, yeah, you know, I don't know how to answer to the fans. So I, 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 I say, you better take a scotch tape and paste it back. You know, so he tried to paste, you know, wow, then it looks really bad. Of course, uh, I thought it's a, a, a moment of, um, you know, where I can teach him a, a, a precious lesson. So I give him another new piece of cover page. I say, write your name, he stay play. I say, life don't always allow you to start all over again. But if you have a chance, then you should treasure it. So I give you a new piece. Then I say, what happened? Then he told me, say that for every mistake that he made, every mark he makes, every mark that he, 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 um, he lost, one caning. So that's five. I look at him and say, what? What kind of logic is that? Okay, I'm not mention the names. Huh? When the parents come, I realize, oh, okay, lah, now I know. Lah. The first question the parents ask me is, uh, who is first in class? Oh, this type of question. I say, um, oh, I, I, I try to uh, you know, change topic. They say, is this this person or is it this person? She, the, the parents ask me. Actually, you already know. Uh, so why you ask me? You already know already. <laughs> you already go bigger. Go and ask me some more. But they have needs. They have needs. And I'm just so thankful that um, I journeyed with many of them. Before I left, you know, in fact, I was asked to go for a course when, I was, uh, when they are taking the P5, uh, when they were, they were P5. And I told my principal, can I delay for one more year so I can finish PSLE with them? And I'm just so thankful that they did. In fact, they did so well, you know, that that, that year we, 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 we hit, uh, we actually exceeded our, uh, our school target. And then uh, for the first time, you know, managed to hit, you know, um, the, the, the target and beyond. And then I actually, um, yeah, you know, so, so I've also learned that because of that, when I was um, a year ahead, when the teachers who teach the weaker ones come to me, and when the teachers who come, who, who take, take the best class come to me, and they, they seek advice, I was able to tell them, say, this one, uh, this is what you do. That one very smart, this is what you can do. All right, so end up I realized, oh, I can be able to just help both sides. What's my point? If I choose not, to follow God's leading, I would have missed what I can do for these little ones. So let me give you three principles that I would keep doing. The first is keep walking by faith, not by sight. I feel inadequate. I find it, how can I help the best? You know, they're so smart. But never mind, I submit. If my BP say this is best for me, I trust him. I walk by faith. I, I just trust God. You know, I'm just going to do it. And it doesn't make sense to me, you know. I, I, I just, I just learn to walk by faith, and don't just walk by faith. Keep walking by faith. Keep walking by faith. Keep walking by faith. Second, keep asking God. God, is this what you want? What do you think? How can I help this boy? How can I help this girl? How can I love this child? How can I love my children? How can I love my parents when they are at home? Keep asking God. God, what's the next step? What do you do now? Uh, brothers and sisters, I'm not saying that. Okay, today eat what? Chicken rice or uh, nasi lemak? And then you send in the market until the, someone say, uh, are you buying or not buying? 
right? You know, so I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about decisions that, you know, you think that matters and then you bring before God. Ask God, what's next? What's next? What's next? Ask God. And finally, keep your promises. Keep your promises. I think that's one thing that the Israelites did well. Though they have been deceived, but they did what's right. They keep their promises. With that, I believe it will help us so that we will not miss the best that God has for us. And then listen carefully. Huh? The, the, when I say don't miss God's best for us, huh? I'm not talking about for us, no. If you hear my story correctly, I'm just saying that the best for us for the good of others. The best for us for the glory of God. And the best for us is to be like Jesus. God or Jesus did not miss God's best for him. He died on the cross for us. So that today we can be saved. So that today we zoom in and study his word. So that God may be glorified. That is God's best for us. Not for me, but for God's glory. For the name of God. So what does God require of you tonight, my brothers and sisters? What have you learned about God tonight? What are the questions that you have in mind? In mind. Let me pray for you. Father, we just want to bless my brothers and sisters even tonight. And Lord, so much has been shared. Um, and Lord, I just pray the Lord that you will bless them so that your word will take root in their hearts. We pray the Lord that we will continue to walk by faith, not by sight. In everything where we will ask you, I mean, not everything per se, but what matters to you, we will ask you. And God direct our steps. Help us to keep our promises, even when it's tough, because we know that when we do that, God, that you will help us. Thank you, God. We bless you. I bless my brothers and sisters, praying all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, no discussion. Uh, yes, question answers. Let me just run through a few more slides. Okay, homework. Uh, Joshua 9 and 10, read them and then, uh, you know, list out the lies. Okay, and then uh, what does God has to say? And uh, finally, these are the study behind the study. Take note of the tension, the interrupt that comes. Take a look at cross-references. Use your five senses, you know, wisely. And then understand the background, you know, the city and all this will help you to understand what uh, the, they are missing. And then you can do comparison and beware of the genre. And then finally, this is the schedule. And uh, we'll see you on 6th of May. Okay, just want to end with uh, uh, some encouragement and uh, also um, just want to bless you and say that uh, please take care of yourself. Uh, drink more water, sleep well, and uh, hopefully this help. Keep digging to the Word of God. God loves you. Bless you, my brothers and sisters. And they will be again.